Hi everyone, Richard Carlton here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about extending the FileMaker platform into areas that it really hasn't been before. And this is all possible now from a new plugin and some integration from the folks at LiveCode. Now as a little bit of history here, FileMaker is a platform for building a custom app. And really LiveCode is a platform, a different platform, for building a custom app. And it's important to understand the differences between the two because some people would say, well, why would you use LiveCode when you should be using FileMaker? Well, they're really very different products. FileMaker fundamentally has an integrated database engine that's part of the design of the platform. So it's a front-end interface, it's some scripting and logic, it also has a fully integrated database engine with a client server model, etc., uh, multiple users, and actually with some pretty decent scalability. LiveCode, on the other hand, is a really great front-end tool for building some apps, but it doesn't have an integrated database backend. Most people that connect database backends to it would use SQL or some sort of application like that, which makes things infinitely more difficult on that end of things. So if you're just looking to build an app without any sort of data management, then you don't really need FileMaker, but everything that I do in life, I'm not just building a app without data. In fact, even if you look at basic applications with the exception of maybe, maybe Angry Birds or something, every successful app out there is managing data. All the Facebooks and the Snapchats and the Instagrams and all these sort of custom applications and certainly everything that runs a business is all about managing the data. So that's why FileMaker is so important. So what does LiveCode bring to the table? Well, because it specializes in really not data management but doing other things, it has much broader capabilities. For example, we needed to build an app for starters that could go on the App Store both on the iOS and on Android. And so this goes back three or four or five years. We were looking at the options out there and we actually went with LiveCode. And what LiveCode gave us was the ability to write some hooks directly to listen to the microphone on the mobile device so the microphone could hear things that were happening. We couldn't really tell what people were saying, but we were using it as a volume detection capability to determine if we could progress forward in the app. So the app would get to a spot, it had to listen for an, a high level of audio, and then it would continue forward. It was almost like a pause in a script, and the script would continue forward if it heard a loud noise. Well, that was going to be pretty much impossible to get coded on the iOS. Certainly, FileMaker doesn't directly support Android with a native application, so we went with another tool. This app was a training application. It didn't really save or organize data, so we didn't need the database, so live code was a good fit fast forward a number of years and I am talking to the folks at LiveCode and they say, hey, we're building a plugin to bring to FileMaker to allow you to build a LiveCode application and to then take the plugin and drop it into FileMaker and to extend the capabilities that you would have with LiveCode into FileMaker. Now we're not talking about building Android apps, etc. because once again we're talking about taking some of LiveCode's capabilities and actually transplanting them into FileMaker. So to extend the analogy, we had this microphone detecting functionality, and that would be something theoretically that we could bring to FileMaker. So I was talking to LiveCode, and they were asking me, well, what would be useful? And they were doing some things with like the camera and other things that you'll see in their demo file. In fact, they have this plugin that comes with a demo file, and you can license just the capabilities within that plugin. And one of those capabilities is Dropbox integration. In fact, they asked me, like, well, what does FileMaker not have that it could really use? And I said, well, there's no real easy way of interacting with Dropbox. And they go, well, that's really simple for us. And I said, well, put it in the plugin. And so here we are, fast forward, and LiveCode is starting to bring to market this plugin with these capabilities. And of course, I'm here talking about the Dropbox connectivity because this allows the ability to read and write in and out of a specific Dropbox for your FileMaker application using the LiveCode plugin. So LiveCode extends the capabilities of the FileMaker platform. In fact, we did a video on this with Jason Young, who is a fantastic developer, but one of the things I try to do is bring the capabilities from the really advanced developers back down to like normal humans, right? So your intermediate developers. 
So this plug-in and capability is really there for people who are kind of intermediate in FileMaker skills. So they've been using FileMaker maybe for a couple years, or maybe they have a technical background, so they're really used to kind of deeper things. You don't have to have 10 years of experience and be certified to use this Dropbox capability. The Live Code Dropbox, I set up and wired up myself, and I was only half awake at the time when I did it, and I had it running in like 10 minutes. Pretty cool. Now, of course, part of the conversation for you would be to decide how you want to use Dropbox with your solution. Does the FileMaker solution make a backup copy of itself in Dropbox itself? Well, it can with this plugin. Does the FileMaker file upload containers or upload files? You could, of course, save a PDF in FileMaker. You could use the Live Code plugin to upload that to Dropbox or to download files or to do all sorts of things. So I want to encourage you to check out the link here on screen. This is the FileMaker website that's part of Live Code. In fact, I think Live Code is coming to the FileMaker Developers Conference this year, and it's a great opportunity for you to talk to them about their technology. Now, the technology isn't free, but I think the Dropbox capability in their plugin is going to be given away for free as kind of a parting gift if you decide not to use this. So the Dropbox capability is going to be there, and so all you have to do is figure out how to wire it into your FileMaker solution. So let's dive over and take a demo of this real quick. It's pretty straightforward. So when you fire up this file initially, you're going to have to authenticate it. And so you're going to have to have an account set up with Live Code. They're just now starting to bring this stuff to market. So the initially, you can get a trial license with them. And so even given this, you're going to need to have a basic account set up. Now, as of this recording, I haven't rolled this out to any customers yet. This is still brand new tech. Now, it's not revolutionary, but for the level of difficulty, it's pretty awesome. I mean, this is simple. It's actually unlocked, which is pretty cool. You can dive in here, take it apart, do all sorts of cool stuff. What I'm going to do is take a look at these options here on the left. So on the left side, I'm going to press this top one here. I can press the Functions button right here, and it will pop up this window, which is kind of a modal window, which means that you have to check out the information here and then close it later. So what I'm going to do is click on Components. I'm going to come down here to Dropbox. Notice that there's Google Drive. You can access the camera. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So here's Dropbox here. And if you read this, the short version is, is that they give you all the bits of code of how the scripts work, etc. So you can wire it up yourself. But I am not going to do any of that. I'm just going to use their demo and show you how simple this is. And if you want to run the demo with the script debugger on, it'll do that. Once again, this file is unlocked. So you get the demo file, it's unlocked. It's pretty cool. Now the plugin is authorized for a trial period. And of course, at the moment, I think we're late in the beta cycle. So at some point, you'll have to consider licensing if it's something you want to use. Now, what's important to understand is that I'm going to copy this link right here. And I'm going to go to the website right here, which is dropbox.com forward slash developers forward slash apps. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to log in. Now all this is kind of written out there on that page, but the short version of this is very simple. Now what you're gonna see is when you come over here is that most of you will have a blank screen and you're going to have to go through the process of creating an application. Now when you create an application, what you're doing is setting up an authorized external connection. And interestingly enough, this all uses REST API technology. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select this one right here. I'm going to select that we want uh, an app folder where you could access a specific app. During my test, I did a full Dropbox. And then I gave it a name. And my first one was called Test 1. So I'll call this Test 2. I'll hit Create. The name is already taken. How about Test 3? That's already taken. Let's call it RCC Test 2. Create app. So that is now an approved app. Now what you're gonna do is this is the settings for your page. Now, and what you have to do is copy down three strings of information. The app key is the first one. The app secret, which is this uh, string of letters here, is the second one. And finally, you're going to generate an access token. And that is the third string. So you need to grab, copy and paste into your local notes field all three items here because you're going to have to put these items into your FileMaker application. 
right? They have to be buried in the app somewhere. And these items are passed to the plugin and the plugin then talks to Dropbox on your behalf. So basically, we're sending these three items to Dropbox as part of the authorization process. So I'm going to go backwards here. And now you're going to notice that I have these two apps right here. I have FileMaker Test 1, RCC Test 2, and they're in development. Now you can apply to put this into production. If you were using it internally with your team, I haven't taken Dropbox out and deployed it kind of horizontally out as a public application built into FileMaker. So I don't know how far this goes. You can read up on it, but if you look at it, you can do quite a bit with your development license. You can have up to 500 users. Once you're ready to go to production, you can apply to go into production. So it's one of those sort of things that Dropbox is going to keep an eye on you and make sure that you're not wreaking havoc on their systems. So once again, we've copied these blocks of information. I'm going to uh, move this out of the way. I'm gonna hit close here. And then I'm going to click over here into the pie chart looking thing. And that brings up the example of custom components. So this is their Dropbox component right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just do a quick demo here. So this is an internal container field. And as we talk to the folks at Live Code, uploading a file, downloading a file uh, were important, but the Live Code people also thought ahead to be able to upload a file and then suppress the little Dropbox notification. So if you're uploading files and doing syncing and people have the Dropbox on their machine, they could be notified all the time of files being updated. And that's really distracting for people. So you can upload files without triggering the notifications that display on everyone's screen. So that's really cool. Now I'm gonna go in the Dropbox and pop open a support folder that I have here. And we've been testing this solution and playing with it. And what I'm going to do is uh, demo the first thing, which is basically to upload a copy of this file. So it's basically the idea of the file saves a copy of itself and then it uploads it. Now, it's going to ask me as I press this button for some uh, feedback. It wants to know where to save the file and what the file's name should be. Now, you can use get functions and get the file's name. And also, of course, I could have hard-coded the destination file here. So I'm just gonna call this backup.fmp12 and I'm gonna hit uh, done. And what happens is we get a progress bar and it's now uploading. So what I've done is I took those three strings of text provided by Dropbox, I pasted them in here, and then it just works. It's that simple. And these buttons, if you look at the code under the hood of these buttons, there's like three or four commands. They're so simple. And so instead of having a million wires everywhere to worry about, all you have to do is make sure that you have a live code plugin installed. And with the Dropbox capability, you don't even need to have a legal license for it. It just works. So as you can see here, it's finishing. And I'm gonna come over here. And as you can see, the backup file is now here. So we're all set. So that worked pretty good. It's a pretty big file. Um, it was 51 meg. So it backed that up and moved it without any problem. So that's pretty cool. We can upload any kind of file as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit this button right here, upload any file with a dialog. I've got a random cat photo right here, the cat burrito photo. I'm gonna say open and it's going to ask me where it goes. I'm going to specify it's gonna go into support and I've got uh, the cat burrito.jpg. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done on that and it's going to queue it and upload it. And so there we go, so we can come back over here and uh, go backwards. Now we have the cat burrito that's here and ready. So the uploading works great, pretty cool. We can also download the file, right, which would be cool. And I'm gonna press the button. Of course, it says, what file do you wanna download? I'm gonna dive into the support folder. And I've got this uh, file right here. This is the look that I have on my face whenever someone gives me some really ugly code in FileMaker, which is no fun. Um, it downloads the photo. And of course, this is running the insert from URL. Basically, it doesn't understand that it's an image. We have other videos in our training course. We talk about this. In fact, I think on one of our free videos, we talk about how to run a process and have this convert so it just displays it here. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and export it to my desktop. And we have the grumpy kitty photo. So we have full upload 
full download and it works pretty good. So what I want to encourage you to do is check out the FileMaker website that is being run by LiveCode. Learn about what your options are. Now I'm just doing Dropbox here because it has such a horizontal appeal. If you took 100 FileMaker users, probably half of them would have some sort of application for uploading or downloading uh, with Dropbox. Obviously the grumpy cat is not something they would care about, but as a general rule, Dropbox interaction, especially if it's simple to implement, is awesome. So check out Live Code, learn about it. If you want to have other capabilities, you want uh, easy access to the cameras, easy access to the microphones on the computer, easy access to Google Drive, etc. There's all sorts of cool things that are built right into this plugin that you don't have to do much to do. That being said, if you want to get into live code and actually start coding, coding, coding it yourself and building your own, you know, kind of custom app that you run through the plugin, so it's like a, a sideline or assistant app for FileMaker, you could do some tremendously cool things to extend the FileMaker platform. And once again, these platforms work together very well. They complement each other because FileMaker's got a great database engine that scales well for work groups and departmental sized groups with maybe 100 or 200 people. And LiveCode lacks the database engine, but it has all sorts of extra cool front end UI and integration capabilities. So check it out. Feel free to like us here on our YouTube channel and feel free to leave your comments about how you would use LiveCode with FileMaker.